So when I started sharing these, um, what I call cheap properties online, it, people, my social media blew up people were like, oh my gosh, where did you find these? Like, where is this? Like, what's wrong with it? And you know, and I, then I would research and I'd come back and be like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's in this, you know, it's not in Rome. It's in this smaller town, maybe on the Adriatic coast of, of Italy. Um, but I, but I researched it and look, there's a, there's two restaurants, there's a pharmacy, there's a grocery store there. You can walk around the town anyway. And then people started sharing those and, uh, it kind of took off from there. So the property to me, was like the, the carrot that got me kind of like salivating and got other people excited. Well, I am super excited today to have Tommy Sykes from Travel Tireman. He's the founder. I love, as you all know, I love talking about travel. I'm a big fan of experiences over money and gifts. I, I think experiences are the way, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. So welcome to the show, Tommy. Thank you for having me, Larry. I'm excited to, uh, to be on. Yeah, it's awesome to have you. And, you know, I, I know a lot about you and your background, but, uh, you know, to give our listeners a little bit of background and understanding of who you are and where you came from, I, I always find, and, and I say this probably on every episode, I always find the entrepreneurial journey so fascinating because it's so different, but a lot of times similar for many people uh, in a lot of different ways. But can you share your path to founding travel travel tirement so we can get an idea of you know what led you up to that point and then we'll spend a lot of time you know speaking about that of course absolutely so i grew up in a entrepreneurial family my dad was a physician but he owned his own practice he um, was with a big practice when he when he first uh, got out of med school but pretty soon knew he wanted to st start his own practice so i kind of grew up with a you know small business mindset just seeing him he, he was the physician. My mom ran the books for his, his practice. Uh, so, you know, always had that opportunity to see it in action and just grew up with it. Like, Oh, well, that's, you know, that's a thing you can do. It's not an unusual thing. Um, so after college, uh, went the corporate route and ended up leaving there to go into finance, um, in the early two thousands. And I started with um, a company that allows you to open up your own office, like in a, in a geographically local space. You're, you're technically an employee, but still a little more of an entrepreneurial feel to it, as opposed to being in a large office with a bunch of other um, advisors or brokers. And then fast forward, I ended up, like a lot of people, leaving the corporate finance world and starting my own registered investment advisor, um, just here in North Carolina, working with my, you know, local geographically local, um, people for financial planning, investment advice, and, and the whole nine yards. And the travel retirement actually grew out of a personal passion, just basically scratching my own itch. My, our, our three ch children, our youngest, our daughter, is heading off to college this fall and we're going to be empty nesters. And so a couple of years ago, I started thinking, you know, we love to travel and, you know, I wonder if there's a way I can leverage my passion, my experience as a certified financial planner, um, and combine that with my, my travel passion to give me something where I could potentially justify traveling more, um, maybe be able to work remote from, from some different locations. And anyway, I started researching, um, you know, not, it's not really digital nomadism. It's more, um, affordable travel, um, particularly for again, empty nesters, retirees. And anyway, I just, I, I shared my passion online. It seemed to be popular with a lot of other people and it's now grown to be a, you know, a pretty decent audience. Amazing. You know, I, I find it fascinating because we either see people who come from that entrepreneurial background like you or they're, you know, first generation entrepreneurs, right? They just got the bug and kind of figured it out themselves. And the only thing I would challenge you or, or say to you is I, I know you're an empty nester and that's the term you use. And I, I used to use that term as well because uh, my kids have been both out of the house for a few years now. And uh, somebody pointed out to me that I'm not an empty nester. I'm a bird launcher. 
Um, exactly. you know, I, bas I basically, you know, launched my babies into the world, which I thought was a much different perspective than empty nesters, because I think empty nesterism, if you will, if that's even a word, kind of has this melancholy connotation to it, where if you start thinking about it, it kind of put it in a different perspective and, uh, you know, feel free to use it because I, I did not trademark it. But, uh, you know, you clearly you clearly have the travel bug and you did not mention that in your early, you know, your earlier years, your childhood leading up to, you know, going into corporate world and then finance. Where did you get that from the, uh, the travel bug? That, that definitely was from my parents. Um, they, they were travelers just as long as I can remember since I was, you know, very young. Um, they, they traveled all over. My dad was a huge, like he's a travel planner. So he would like research, read books, magazines, um, design these trips for our family or, or just for he and my mom. And, um, it just, again, you, you grow up with it. It just becomes part of your, your DNA. And, um, w I was lucky when I was younger because they encouraged us to travel. It was, I was like, every year we're going to go on a, a, another great trip. We went to, you know, to England, we went to France one year, um, we would go visit, um, the Caribbean in North Carolina. That's, you know, fairly close for us, but yeah, it just was a normal part of life. And I know that sounds a little elitist or, or, um, you know, I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate to have had that experience and I, I, it gave me this passion. And so that's one of the reasons I, I enjoy doing this so much is sharing that passion with others and the newsletter, I have a weekly newsletter and every week I just get dozens of responses back from people saying, oh my gosh, like I, 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 re I love to read about France, but I didn't, didn't know about this place and all the stuff there is to do here. Or, or if it's Italy, like, oh, well, I didn't even realize, you know, they had these tax advantages, um, in, you know, in Italy for, for Americans and, Anyway, just to see people discover it and have some of the passion that I, I have, um, just, it gives me, gives me a great feeling. Yeah. I could only imagine growing up with that. You know, I, I did not have that same privilege that you mentioned. I mean, uh, the family I, you know, I came from in the background, we, we traveled a bit, but just to give you an indication, I think the first time I was ever on a plane was when I was 21 or 22 years old, you know, when I was already out of the, out of the house and, you know, now being able to put my kids in a position to travel quite a bit, you know, you could see how they love that so much. And I agree with you. I think it's such a privilege to be able to do that and to be able to give your family those experiences are, are unbelievable. So, you know, at what point did you, uh, you know, where did that inspiration like collide together, you know, in terms of taking this lie, you know, this, this idea of travel and your love of travel into a side venture. I know you mentioned, you know, now that the kids were out of the house, that that was kind of the impetus, but was there more to it than that? Was it really, that was the aha moment or was this something you were kind of planning to do in some way, shape or form all along? Well, I, I had always planned to travel more and, and we have traveled with our kids a lot. And when they, you know, I would share some of the stuff that I found with them also. And they were like, Oh, that's amazing. You, sh you and mom should, you know, should go live in France for a month and we'll come visit you. Like they were, there was a, <laughs> an ulterior motive, but the, there kind always of the, is. <laughs> yes. Kind of the, I don't know, the turning point, like the, the real spark for travel retirement was, um, I started researching property, you know, real estate in Italy and France. And we're not talking about, you know, Paris, Paris is, is super expensive, but there are so many places in Italy and France, Southwest of France, um, like directly South of France, the Northwest of France, there are places where you can buy a stone built two bedroom, two bath cottage with an acre of land for a hundred thousand dollars, $120,000. And I mean, it's, this is not a ruin. This is a livable you know, place. Yeah. And then I, when I started researching Italy, Italy is even more insane. I mean, obviously in the United States, real estate prices are a little nuts as they have been for a mm -hmm. while. And anyway, so th this idea that our house that we own here in North Carolina, the idea that we could sell this house, 
buy a house in France and Italy and still have money left over. I was like, this is, this is crazy to me. And I didn't see anybody else sharing, um, the details I'd heard, you know, one Euro homes, uh, program in Italy and, uh, or in France, you hear like the escape to the chateau, the, you know, buying these, uh, broken down chateaus and renovating them. But for people that just want to have an option of either a holiday home or a, you know, future retirement home, um, the affordability blew me away. And so when I started sharing these, um, what I call cheap properties online, it, people, my social media blew up and people were like, oh my gosh, where did you find these? Like, where is this? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with it? And, you know, and I, then I would research and I'd come back and be like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's in this, you know, it's not in Rome. It's in this smaller town, maybe on the Adriatic coast of, of Italy. Um, but I, but I researched it and look, there's a, there's two restaurants, there's a pharmacy, there's a grocery store there. You can walk around the town anyway. And then people started sharing those and, uh, it kind of took off from there. So the property to me was like the, the carrot that got me kind of like salivating and got other people excited. And then questions obviously just come from that. You know, wh what's the right. tax situation? Do I need a visa? Can Americans even buy in France or Italy? Um, and so I started researching these, sharing them, and then it, it just grew from there. Yeah, great stuff. And, and you know, I, I think you've kind of evolved from, you know, what I, I think you call wander wealth to travel retirement to cheap homes in Italy and France. Can you, you know, share that process with us? Because I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting one. Sure. So wander wealth is, is technically still my registered investment advisor. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, for all the uh, planners who are watching, that is my, you know, financial planning investment advisory firm, kind of traditional geographically close people, people that met at network events, referrals, that kind of thing. We're terrific. And obviously I, I, I love my clients, I love that business, but you always hear about niching down, you know, wanting to um, do something very specific for a very specific audience. Um, and it makes it easier to makes the business simpler because your your um, your toolbox doesn't need to be quite as broad, um, and it can make it more attractive to people because they're like, oh well, that's the that's the exact thing that I'm thinking of or I, I need help with. So um, yeah, when I started doing the travel retirement stuff, I my two personal favorite countries at the moment, at least, are France and Italy. And so initially, I you know I would share maybe properties in Portugal or Spain, m almost all in Europe. Um, but then the you know I started thinking about I was like, again, I don't want to spread myself too thin. So I was like, how about if I stick with my two favorites? I know I have the passion for them, so I have that motivation every day. Um, but also, you start learning the the details, and it's like there's there's a decent amount to, to learn about, you know, the tax situation, how to buy property, um, the visa situation of these two countries. And so currently it's those two. So if somebody comes to me, they're like, Hey, we've heard Spain is great. I'll, I'll refer them out to somebody else. I'll just say, Hey, maybe in the future we'll do that, but I'm trying to stick to my, my knitting. And I think that's been beneficial because then you're all the content you make, it becomes much more concentrated um, people that come to your social media or to your website you don't want to attract everybody you want people to either be like this is i'm definitely this is me like i'm definitely want this or oh this is absolutely not what i'm interested in it's hard for people right. to understand that initially but that's absolutely the best thing that can happen is for people to be like either love you or i don't want to say hate you but have no interest um, because it keeps you from, you know, being wishy-washy about anything. You, you, you know, you do a thing, you do it well, and the people that are, are attracted to that are going to, are going to become, you know, great clients. Yeah. And, and I mean, are you, you know, I, I guess there's kind of two questions that I have there. Cause I think businesses always struggle with the whole I no, notion of, you know, niching down and, you know, in your case, narrowing down to just content around Italy and France for the most part, you know, maybe you could share for a moment, uh, you know, I, I, we understand the point about attracting the right people versus maybe detracting, 
um, the the folks that you don't want to attract, if you will, or or I guess deferring them away. Uh, but what other benefits have you seen from you know narrowing down that content to just those two countries, if you will? Um, you know, one side, obviously, like I said, the content becomes easier. So um, I, I have a YouTube channel, um, which is, has gotten to be pretty popular. And so if you go to YouTube and you search on, search on cheap homes, Italy, cheap homes, France, um, I'm, I'm almost surely going to pop up in the list somewhere. So search becomes much easier niching down as opposed to somebody just, you know, retiring to Europe. Is that, are they talking about Norway? Are they talking about Scotland? Are they talking about, you know, Greece? Um, so it, it, again, it, it helps you, it makes it easier. The constraints make it a little easier when you're um, designing your content. And also when people are searching on content, you're going to pop up uh, for those things. Um, the other thing with niching is, and I didn't plan this, but I've, there's been a ton of outreach from people in France and Italy, professionals and also expats who live there, who are like, oh my gosh, I wish I had had this or I wish I'd known about this, you know, when I was starting my journey, is there something I can help you with? Like, you know, I live in this area of Italy. If you have people that want to come over to do maybe property tours, we can work out a way to, um, you know, you can refer them to me and, you know, we could collaborate together or, you know, I saw you're going to, you're doing a video on this little town. How about if I drive over there and take some pictures for you, like actually walk around and kind of you like give you the, the, on the, on the street, uh, view. I mean, little mm -hmm. things like that, which again, I didn't plan, but I've had tons of that happen. And it's just, um, it's a, it's a virtuous cycle, if you will. Sure. So, I mean, one of the things we're all about here is besides joy on the Midland Money Mindset, we're also about giving our listeners, you know, tangible takeaways. And I'm sure there are plenty of people out there listening that are thinking about or have thought about or maybe they haven't considered but should consider, you know, the possibility of retiring abroad. You know, what what are a couple of, you know, top tips that you would have for them if they are considering or contemplating retiring, you know, abroad. Sure. So I'll, uh, since obviously my expertise is Italy and France, I'll just say both Italy and France are surprisingly affordable for being again, G seven countries. These are not, you know, what we consider, you know, uh, third world countries, anything like that. Well-developed transportation networks, international airports, large cities, small cities, um, you know, tons of beach resorts, things like that. Um, they're both super affordable depending on where you are. As I mentioned earlier, Paris area, fairly expensive, you know, until you get to out quite a ways. But France is the largest country in Western Europe. So there's a ton of places you can go, different geographies, different, different landscapes. And, but still it's France, terrific healthcare, terrific transportation. The roads are excellent. Um, the bureaucracy is, is bad. So Italy and France, both legendary for their bureaucracy. And that's not a, you know, that's not a false statement, but the benefits that you can get living there, quality of life is, is second to none. When we, when we move to Italy, Italy, again, also affordable, more affordable from a cost of living standpoint, but Italy in the last few years has um, basically passed uh, some tax laws where they're trying to attract foreigners, particularly to the south of Italy, um, to replenish. They've had a lot of migration within the country from the south, from the more rural areas to the north where most of the population lives. And so they have some incredible tax benefits for people that want to live there, uh, relocate and retire in Italy. In, in fact, it's a, you can pay just 7% flat tax on all your worldwide income. And it's, it's an incredible benefit if you, if you compare it to the regular tax rates in Italy. Um, and that's absolutely one of the most popular things that I do videos on and workshops is trying to explain to people how it works, kind of what the pros and cons are of it. 
how to find these towns that qualify for the 7% flat tax. And that's a huge tax benefit. So, so what I'm hearing is if you're considering traveling abroad, it's not really uh, a decision that you can make just on a whim. It's something that you really have to. And, and when we're, when I say abroad in this context today, I'm talking about Italy or France, it's not something you should just kind of plan on, Hey, yeah, I'm just doing this. It's really something you have to put time, effort, and energy into because there are pros and cons to each of those countries. There are pros and cons to areas within those countries. And you really have to, you know, just like anything else, do your homework and figure out where you ultimately want to be and what's the best fit for you. Exactly. And I, I like to um, talk about it in the, in the realm of three M's. There's your mindset. So kind of what's your, what's your idea of living there? Like what, what is your daily right. life that you're imagining? Um, that's an important thing. And you have to kind of get that right up front. If you're coming, if you're thinking, oh, well, the, the property is really cheap. I'm going to buy a bunch and like rent them out and become like a, you know, landlord. It's not like the United States. Number one, the properties may or may not appreciate like they do in the United States. Um, there was, there's a lot of more restrictions on, on doing that. There's, you know, legal restrictions on it. Um, so y- you need to come into it with the right mindset that, you know, is this the, really the life you want to live? Um, the second M has to do with money. And that is you really need to do an inventory of, you know, what, what your income source is going to be, what assets do you have now that you're either going to liquidate to, to fund it? Um, or if you're not liquidating, what are you going to do with them? If, if you still own property, maybe in the United States, um, you have to, again, it doesn't have to be a super complex situation, but you need to be considering what, what, what the answers to those questions mm-hmm. are. Sure. And then the last one is just the mechanics. So again, do I need a visa? What type of visa do I need? What's the process to do that? If I'm buying property, you know, is that, uh, how does that work? How do I actually get the money from the United States to France or Italy in euros? It's not secret and it's not super complicated, but you do need to consider these things up front. The last thing I'll just say is it's easy and hopefully I'm not causing this, but it's easy when you find these like cheap properties, it's very easy to kind of fall in love with oh my gosh, I can't believe I can get this property for this price without considering, again, what amenities are nearby. How far is the nearest hospital? Um, You know, do I have to have a car, you know, to to live here? Um, It's easy to fall in love with those properties, but you really want to consider the the area first and then look for a property that fits you. Because a nice property in a terrible location will not work long term, but a decent property in a great location, you can fix it up, you can renovate, and that can turn into a dream home. So I always encourage people, even when you find a place you think, oh my gosh, I have to have this, you need to go do a discovery trip, do a test drive, um, you know, live there for a couple weeks and and live as a local, go shopping, um, you know, go to the town hall, maybe meet some people and just see what the vibe is before you commit your, your, you know, cause again, it's still a substantial investment. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's yeah. not willy nilly. I listen, I agree. And I think though, that's a great way to uh, break it down. Mindset, money and mechanics. I mean, even, even if people are looking to relocate within the state. So many times we will have the families that we serve go down there for a season or two to check out a given area. We had one family that thought they wanted to buy a home in a certain part of Florida. And the first year they went down there to rent, they didn't like the community. They didn't like the area. Had they bought that home, they might've been stuck there for a while, depending upon what the market looks like. Cause it's, you know, it's a lot easier to go in and rent for a little while, get to learn the area and then buy once you know that this is where I want to be then buy and then have to go through the mechanics of selling and buying a new place. So um, I I would imagine you want to do some of that recon in advance, uh, just like I described with something in France or Italy the same way to kind of get a sense of where you want to be and then kind of start looking for those properties. So um, I I think those I think those three M's are are great points. So, you know, for for people who are 
you know, using social media, you know, different avenues. I know you've been very successful with YouTube, as you mentioned, you, you hit a million views, which is un unbelievable, a million views in a year on YouTube, you know, for those that are working to grow their audience and, and kind of strive and work towards that, you know, what advice do you have for them? How, how did that, you know, how did you get there? I, I can't imagine it was just luck. I'm sure maybe there's a little bit of that involved, but I'm sure there was a lot of strategy there as well. Yep. I, I mean, there's definitely some luck involved. I think the pandemic obviously caused people to start looking at, at uh, other options, places to live, maybe do things that they've been dreaming about. Maybe it sped it up in their, in their mindset, but, um, but it's, it's been, it's definitely been some trial and error, but I definitely, I mean, it's still every week I will get on the computer and watch the videos of some of the other channels that I watch and respect and try to kind of meta meta think about like, why am I, why is this interesting to me? Like what made me click on this thumbnail? Um, kind of what's the underlying draw and try to think about like for myself, what, what was the, the kind of the impetus? Um, the other thing is there's tons of content, free content where you can learn like, what makes a good thumbnail that, that to me, and it, it sounds cliche, but it's like the, the book cover. Um, you know, they say, don't, don't judge a book by the cover, but if you're walking through the bookstore, the bright cover with the big black lettering on it is going to naturally draw your eyes. You know, you might walk over there, open it up and be like, eh, this is not for me, but the first goal of YouTube or, you know, social media really like to open a post or a thread. The first goal is get them to click, get them to open it or pause. So thumbnails on YouTube, I can't, I, I can't express how important that is. And I see a lot of people, cause I have people contact me, ask me questions about this. Uh, for a lot of people, that's the absolute last kind of stage for them is, okay, I've got the video, I've edited it. I've, you know, I, I, I know where, kind of what the topic is and, and what links I'm going to put in. Now, what should I put as a thumbnail? And sometimes it'll just be like a still of their, of their head, kind of just looking at the camera. I mean, the thumbnail is absolutely the most important part of, of YouTube. Do you start with that and then create the content around that? Or because it, it seems to me you're saying like, it, it sounds like you were alluding to the fact that people sometimes either do it backwards or, or maybe we're just trying to say that the thumbnail is an afterthought and it shouldn't be. Um, yep. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? It's very early in the process. So I kind of have now that, now that I've done, you know, I don't know how many videos I've done now, but you know, 50 something maybe, um, there's a, there's a style that I know has resonated. So, you know, part of this is just consistency and you're just going to learn, you know, which ones do well, which ones don't well, don't do well. Um, but what I'll do is if, w when I know I'm going to do a property video, the first thing I'm going to do is look through, like I'm going to show an individual property, look through the property photos on the listing and try to pick out, okay, which one is going to be that carrot on the thumbnail where, you know, maybe it's got a, a swimming pool. So I'm going to have, you know, the picture of the, the property with a swimming pool. And I'm going to have a, a little um, thing that says, you know, only 89,000 euros with a swimming pool and be pointing to the pool. Something that's going to be very like engaging, but people are going to be like, no way. There's no way. I need more. I need to learn more. Yeah, or the the probably the most popular video I've done certainly over the last six months, it had a picture of a beautiful beach in Puglia, southern Italy. I mean, gorgeous blue water, and it says you know cheap home, and it's got seven minute walk, and it's got a point to this pointing to the beach, and so people are like, oh my gosh, like I want to live by this beach, and um, so you you definitely have to think about it, like what's the concept going to be. Um, now all the other stuff, you know, I share, you know, property photos. I talk about the, the area it is, all that stuff. That's super important. It still needs to, you need to, um, deliver on the promise that's in the YouTube. I mean, on the, on the thumbnail. So you need to come with the goods, but getting people just to click on it is, 
it's an art in and of itself. I'll just say it, say it that way. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, I want I want to shift for a moment because a lot of people talk about from a marketing perspective, like social media platforms like YouTube, basically you're renting space on their platform, right? You're you're basically using them. They change their algorithm. They change something else. You know, that could significantly impact your exposure, your views, your your marketing, uh, you know, distance, if you will. You know, one of the areas where you can own that audience is through newsletters. Um, you know, I think entrepreneurs are looking in general to own that audience. And that's something you've also had success with. So how have you grown that newsletter list has, you know, because that's where you own your audience. They're, you know, delivering it right to their inbox versus using a platform like YouTube or other social media platform where you're renting it. Yep. No, I totally agree. You don't want to build your house on rented land because you, right. you never truly control it. But yeah, email list, which is, you know, newsletter uh, list, absolutely critical. And I, I did start doing that early. And for anybody who's interested, if you go to my website, traveltirement.com, it, it is barely a website. It is literally just one page. There are no posts. There are no, there's no contact me. There's nothing. There's only one thing that people can do when they go to that page. And that is sign up for the newsletter or leave. <laughs> I, I don't want to give people any other option. If they have a question, they can sign up for the newsletter and they can email me. Um, I don't have a menu. There's no, again, there's nowhere else you can go on the website. That has been pretty key too, at least to start building this. Now, eventually, obviously I do want to have more content and blog posts and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I'll do is, for every, you know, social media post that I do that I think, oh, this is probably a popular topic. I'll kind of like the thumbnail, make that first tweet or the top of the LinkedIn post. You want something that's engaging that makes them go, oh, that no way. Or that's really interesting. Or, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about that. Something to make them open it. Then towards the bottom, you want to reference your um, newsletter or your email list as a, a way to get the next step, the next piece of information. Hey, if, yeah, if, if you loved seeing this cheap property, I share multiple cheap properties every Saturday in your inbox, sit on your couch with your cup of coffee and, and go along with me, um, go sign up at traveltirement.com. And you'll see that in every one of my YouTube videos, it's, it's not long. It's, you know, it's fairly brief. Hey, if we haven't met, I'm Tommy from TravelTirement.com. If you dream about retiring to Italy or France or owning a holiday home there, you should join my newsletter. It comes out every Saturday where I share cheap properties and tips on doing just that. Something very simple like that. And every day, I mean, before we got on here, I checked. I think I have 15 new email subscribers today. And I've been traveling recently. I have not posted a YouTube video in the last three weeks, I think. And I still every day I'm getting probably 10 to 30 email subscribers um, on the list. So you start, yeah, you can start slow, but definitely start building an email list, whether you call it a newsletter or whether you offer a, you know, what they call a lead magnet, which would be like, you know, here's my, here's the top three, top three mistakes people make when moving to Italy, or here's the top five best regions in France to move to and just have a simple like Google doc or something, something that'll get them to, to want to join your email list. It's absolutely critical. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And you've had some great takeaways and, you know, as we've talked about Tommy, you know, we're all about joy on this show and travel and experiences brings me a lot of joy, but we ask each of our guests the same final question. I'm going to do the same today, which is what did you do today that brought you joy? and put you in the right mindset for success? I, number one, I love that you do this, Larry. And of course I follow you on social media and I just love the, they're always tying back to joy because, because I think we don't have enough of it in the world. Thank you. Um, you know, one thing that I do just about every day that gives me <laughs> some joy and this again, sounds very simple. Um, I'm an early riser. So I typically am, am one of the first up in the house is I really enjoy making a, a cup of coffee, going down and sitting on the front porch with my dog 
and dreaming about travel. And I get t- tons of, of personal inf- inspiration just um, browsing, you know, properties in Italy and France, reading some of the uh, blog posts that I follow for Italy and France. And I'm always in the mode of where's the next adventure going to be. But spending, you know, about 30 minutes just sitting there, it's quiet. It's like personal time, um, having a cup of coffee and just appreciating the moment and all the opportunities that I have ahead of me just always gives me joy. Love it. I love it. And it sounds like a great way to uh, to kick off the day. But uh, and, and Tommy, we're going to have all of your information in the show notes. But if people want to connect with you, learn more about you, I think I know where this is going to go. Learn more about travel retirement. You know, what's the easiest and the best place for them to go? The the best place to go is is the newsletter or the website. Um, and that is at travel So like the word travel and retirement, just take out the R E travel You can also search on YouTube for travel retirement and I'll pop up there too. And please, you know, feel free if, if you want to get in touch, join the newsletter, shoot me an email, ask me any questions you have, or on YouTube, leave me a comment. I, I try to respond to literally every comment. So, um, I'm a, a open book if anybody has any questions. Awesome. Well, thank you for spending these uh, these minutes with us. It's you know thirty plus minutes. I, I appreciate it greatly. A lot of great nuggets in here for our entrepreneurs, business owners, and, and people who are just interested in travel. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, nuggets in here. So thank you for that, and uh, enjoy your day. My pleasure. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>